This is 65 WSJT Vineland. Again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting hour of Power of Pro Wrestling. I'm Jim Ross. Thank you very much for being with us. We have an outstanding hour in store for you here on PPW. You're going to see the fantastic stick on the Sheep Herders inside a barbed wire cage. We'll have that match for you later in this hour of Power of Pro Wrestling. We'll also see Terry Taylor in action against Freebird Buddy Roberts for the UWF television title. You'll see the video, the new video, on the fabulous Freebirds entitled The Boys Are Back in Town. We're also going to see Chavo Guerrero take on Rick Steiner. We'll be hearing from Dr. Death Steve Williams, and we'll also see Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert in action. As a matter of fact, we're ready to go to the ring now. Let's go back in time and see Hot Stuff. Introducing our next match. One fall, or television time remaining, at 225 pounds. Every girl's dream, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. Sir Oliver Humperdinck. And now, introducing in the blue corner, from Florida, weighing 226 pounds, Tommy Ray. Fine young athletes, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, we prepare to continue here on Mid-South Wrestling, Jim Ross and Joe Watts with you here. And as we said, really, words can't describe our feeling right now and our thoughts and our prayers with Hacksaw Butch Reed as to the unprovoked attack by Dick Murdoch. But uh, be that as it may, we, too, we do have two fine young athletes, Joel in the ring, and one that I have said on many occasions, he has the biggest ego in professional wrestling, and I'm talking specifically about Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. Well, we've seen Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert go through many stages here in the Mid-South. He first came in, teamed with the Knife Air, he left him, he, they got back together as a tag team, they gained the Mid-South Tag Team Championships, and let me tell you, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert is, has got to be, next to Dr. Death, probably one of the most improved wrestlers in Mid-South. And I think one of the main reasons for that is the fact that he has learned how to implement that hot shot. What a punishing hold that is. And we have seen him using so effectively uh, in the last several weeks as he has put together a very impressive winning streak. Gilbert weighed in at 225, right at 226. Both men very, obviously very similar in size. Gilbert, former pro wrestling rookie of the year, a little bit more experienced, and Wright is certainly not intimidated by the laurels achieved by the hot stuff. Sir Oliver Humperdinck. Well, I tell you, there are a lot of a great young junior heavyweights coming into the Mid-South. There you see Sir Oliver Humperdinck. But I tell you, that they're all vying for that... Uh, the, the Mid-South Junior World's Junior Heavyweight title is getting ready to be established. But this man right here, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, has established himself in this territory, and he's going to be a tough man to beat. I think he's got to be one of the top candidates for that Junior Heavyweight title because he competes so well with the, with the heavyweights as well, kind of like Terry Taylor in that aspect. However, Terry, of course, out of the range of the Junior Heavyweight contention, I don't feel like he needs to even be in it because uh, he's definitely got to be a candidate for the North American heavyweight title. Having once held it, he defeated the Nightmare soundly on Mid-South last week. Oh, it looks like he went for that hot shot, but he didn't quite have the distance on it. He, and, you know, that's the first time I've seen that hot shot actually put Gilbert in danger. This is kind of a new aspect to it. Gilbert caught him again. This time he sets it. A devastating maneuver, the hot shot by Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. The former professional wrestling rookie of the year, utilizing his pet maneuver, the hot shot. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert with a victory here on Power Pro Wrestling. And we'll be back and hear from Steve Dr. Death Williams after this timeout. 
If you've ever considered entering the ever-growing construction marketplace, consider this. Delaware Valley School of Trades will train you for your career. Building renovations. Later in this segment, we'll see Chavo Guerrero take on Rick Steiner in a great matchup from Houston, Texas. But before we do, I'd like to for you to listen to this interview from Steve Dr. S. Williams. I sincerely feel that he will be back in action very soon, contrary to belief of the Freebirds. Be that as it may, Steve Dr. Death Williams made this statement. I just got out of therapy. I am ice in my neck. You know, I sit here and I think about the match, and I really don't know oh, exactly what happened. All I know that Bam Bam had that oriental spike on Ted, and I thought I was getting the best of him. Three on one, and then it was the lights out. Oh, Ooh. you know, I hear that UWF spending the Freebirds. I don't want nobody to spend nobody. I want the Freebirds to be in great health when I come back. Freebirds, I have one thing to tell you. While you're eating your breakfast, while you're running down that highway, you just remember who you hurt. You just remember. Those comments from Steve, Dr. Death Williams, we certainly look forward to him coming back, and I know that he appreciates all the mail. What a tremendous amount of cards and letters that he's received in the last few weeks. It means a great deal to that four-time All-American. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to Houston, Texas for more Power Pro Wrestling action. Hello, I'm Frank Dusick. We're here at the Sam Houston Coliseum in beautiful Houston, Texas. Action just underway in this exciting one-fall event between the Mexican sensation Chavo Guerrero and the former University of Michigan All-American Rick Steiner. Steiner, the man on your left, large man, over 270 pounds, massive upper body strength. Chavo Guerrero, known for years along the border, one of the great Mexican-American wrestlers out of El Paso, Texas. Guerrero, an ex ex exponent of the uh, scientific style, a mixture of the Mexican and the American style. Steiner, showing that amateur background, University of Michigan, swing under arm drag, Chavo out and to the floor. Rick Steiner, the large man under the tutelage originally of Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer, now under the tutelage of Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. A tie-up collar and elbow, Guerrero with the headlock. Goes for the arm bar, bars the big man's arm, steps inside. Oh, up underneath and a big hip toss and Steiner's down, of course complaining. He learned this, I'm sure, from Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, complain about the trunks. Win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. That's Rick Steiner's motto. Referee Carl Fergie about to take the bump there as Chavo Guerrero explains the fundamentals of, an, of a hip toss. Of course, from our angle, it, we could easily see with the cameras there was no trunk pulling there at all. Uh, Ste Guerrero used Steiner's upper body weight to get him up and over and just a simple uh, hip toss. But, of course, Steiner trying to create a little confusion, trying to confuse the referee a little bit. One more time to tap, collar and elbow, Guerrero in behind. Now this, uh, at this point, Steiner needs to get Guerrero, or Guerrero rather needs to get Steiner off his feet. They reverse, they reverse again. Guerrero behind Steiner. He needs to take the big man down. There he goes. Take the big man off his feet to negate that upper body strength. Or that University of Michigan style. Set right out, came back to the neutral position. A lot of good basic wrestling here in the early going. This match only, we've joined in progress about a minute into the match. So both men very fresh, still feeling each other out. Collar and elbow again. Steiner this time with the headlock. Steiner, a powerful man. Bench press in excess of 500 pounds. Works out every day. Of course, it shows. One look at him. Guerrero takes one leg up. Guerrero, crafty veteran. Numerous years in the ring. Gets the big man up. Ooh, drops him on the knee. I'll tell you, that's sure hard on the cartilage. Oh, a little shortcut by Steiner. A little right to the head. Back Guerrero up, admonishment where referee Carl Fergie. Steiner, of course, denying any, any mis misactions there. Oh. Guerrero, instead of locking up with a little bit of a boot to the leg, work on the big man's 
upper thigh muscle. You know, if you take those legs out from under the big man, negate that strength when he's down on his knees, everybody's the same size. All that upper body strength means very, very little. Perhaps Guerrero, Guerrero's strategy in this match is going to be to go to the leg. Go to the legs. Again, the kick to the leg up into the, the thigh muscle. And big Rick Steiner steps out onto the apron. In professional wrestling, you might remember that a kick with the toe is illegal. However, any kick with the flat of the foot or the instep, like the one Chavo Guerrero just used, is a legal blow. In spite of uh, Rick Steiner's complaints, referee Carl Fergie explains the rules, and we're ready for more action. A little bit of a conference. Steiner perhaps asking for a handshake, a show of friendship. Guerrero not trusting him, of course. And for a third time, the boot into the thigh. And big Rick Steiner now is getting mad. Goes to the apron, goes for the chain. Picked up that big chain. Uh, referee Carl Fergie tells him it's a wrestling match. No weapons allowed. Back into the ring comes a reluctant Steiner. In the background, you can see a portion of this great crowd here at the Sam Houston Coliseum. Nearly 10,000 strong. Joining UWF wrestling at its finest. I want to make a special uh, congratulations to all our friends in Navasota for a big fundraiser up there. Uh, folks raised quite a bit of money for the local organization. We're really proud of them and uh, hope to come back again next year. Once again, Steiner takes the blow into the same area of the, ca of the thigh. Chavo Guerrero begins to go to work. Not many men know how to work the legs and how to take the legs off under a big man. Chavo Guerrero, the experience of all these years, goes in with a step over toe hold and big Rick Steiner a little bit confused. Steiner for all his size is very green, very uh, a rookie still. And when a man takes him down and begins to work on the legs, he's used to the headlock, he's used to the arm. This could be uh, Chavo Guerrero's entire strategy to confuse the big man by constantly going for his legs. And so far it's worked very well for Chavo Guerrero. Steiner needs to be careful at this point. You notice he's keeping the arm and shoulder up. Referee Carl Fergie, always alert, one of the fine officials of the UWF, always alert for the possibility of a pin. Guerrero, ho oh, oh, down with the leg across Steiner's big leg. Work on that knee, work on that thigh muscle. Back up with the pressure on the ankle. If you'll notice from the camera angle, he has a, one knee on the inside of Steiner's knee. He's pulling on the toe, twisting the knee and the ankle. Big Rick Steiner right now, those cartilage and ligaments in that leg are taking a little bit of a strain. Steiner looking for that shortcut, referee took Carl Fergie right on top of things. And now the young man from the University of Michigan goes to the ropes, referee Carl Fergie calls for the break. And a clean break it is, courtesy of Chavo Guerrero, fine young man Guerrero. Pride of both Mexico and the United States, native of El Paso, Texas. His dad, Gory Guerrero, one of the veterans of the 60s, a legend all over the world of professional wrestling. They tie up Collar Neville, back, back into the corner again. Oh, a Sunday! Referee Carl Fergie stepped in for the break, and Rick Steiner saw the advantage. Oh, big right hand to the head of Chavo Guerrero, and Guerrero is down. Guerrero is stunned. He gave a clean break earlier. Thought for sure he'd get the same break from Steiner, and he is stunned. And big Rick Steiner goes to work. Drops him across that top strand of the, court, of the ropes on his throat. And the big man from the University of Michigan shows now what hot stuff Eddie Gilbert's been teaching. Another big clubbing right to the head. Chavo Guerrero is staggered back and down to the knee. Steiner, a well-conditioned athlete, now moves in like an animal sensing the kill. Throws Chavo Guerrero to the floor. Steiner pacing, wanting Guerrero back in. There's the chain. Steiner's picked up that chain. He's outside on the apron. Referee Carl Fergie. I don't know if Fergie realized he hit him or not. I think if he saw it for sure, if he was sure he clubbed him with the chain, not just the collar, this match would be over right here. Must have hit him with just the collar in that case. This match would have been over right here for that. Chavo Guerrero is down, and he's down hard. I think now Fergie, now Fergie's beginning to realize what happened. He thinks he hit him with the chain. If Fergie believes he did, if he really believes he did, this match is over, ladies and gentlemen. This match will be over. It'll be a disqualification immediately. Steiner goes past the referee, back on Guerrero. And at this point, the young man from El Paso, Texas, is in a bad way, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, a big clothesline, and Chavo Guerrero went down and went down hard, and he's not moving. Rick Steiner, the young man, wasted just a moment pacing around. Oh, boy, that was a count of two and a half if there ever was one. 
Steiner, the inexperienced showing right there. He hit that big clothesline, sent Chavo Guerrero down. Guerrero didn't move. Instead of diving into the pin immediately when he could have gotten the one, two, three, Steiner took just a minute, gave Guerrero just enough of a breather to kick out. Guerrero back to his feet, gaining the strength of the big man by getting him up. And for his efforts, he's driven into the corner. Guerrero hanging on those ropes. Oh, what a boot to the back of the head that was. Those percussion blows, and out Chavo Guerrero must be seeing stars right now. 270 pounds down on the throat of Chavo Guerrero, taking the wind out of the man. I'll tell you, in a very short period of time, this Rick Steiner sure has learned a lot of veteran tactics. Of course, a right to the jaw has nothing to do with being a veteran. That was nothing more than a street tactic right there. Goes in for the right, across into the turnbuckle. There again, that long wait. Oh, once again, Steiner made that long wait. The second time he's made the same mistake. Gave Chavo Guerrero the opening, and there's a drop kick. A second spinning kick, and the big man from the Michigan is down. Guerrero's up. He's got his win, and it's over at, oh, into that top strand of turnbuckle right by the throat. Chavo Guerrero goes for the headlock. Big bulldog. Oh, drove Rick Steiner's head into the, into the canvas. And Steiner is down. Chavo Guerrero's a little slow getting up from the punch, but he's taken from Steiner, but he's back on his feet and still carrying it to the big man from Michigan. Irish whip into the ropes. Reversal, Guerrero into the ropes. Oh, -ho! went for the leg. Down. There it is, backdrop. Both men hit and hit hard. Neither man really at his senses right now. You can sure tell those big clubbing blows of Rick Steiner have taken their effect on the normally alert and crisp Chavo Guerrero. Ten minutes gone in the match. Ten minutes. Ducks under the clothesline again. Oh, the flying headbutt off the ropes. Steiner is down. A second. And Steiner is down and down hard. That one may have caught him on the chin. There's the count of one, the count of two, and it's three. That one must have caught him on the chin. Rick Steiner is down. Chavo Guerrero for El Paso, Texas, your winner. winner Ten minutes, that. 30 seconds. Chavo Guerrero! Another impressive victory for Chavo Guerrero, the native of Mexico City, now living in El Paso, Texas, with a great victory here on Power Pro Wrestling, and we'll be back with a barbed wire cage match, the Fantastics versus the Sheep Herders, after we hear this from Mid-South Sports. Now let's get a couple of things straight right up front. The baseball bat is barred from the six-man elimination match. If you get counted down to three counts, you've got to leave. If you give up, you've got to leave. If you get thrown over the top rope, you've got to leave. Because I'll tell you right now, I am in set. I am ticked off, man, because people are going to start treating me and my brothers the way they should. We're the world six-man tag team champions. Terry is the number one man in wrestling as the universal heavyweight champion. And that door train, let me tell you something, baby. I seen that twinkle in your eye when I kissed you, and you felt it. I felt the warmth of your body, and you know it. And I want you to remember this, that nobody gets away with slapping P.S. Your day will be coming, but there's bigger things to take care of, buddy. Hey, we're going to take care of that, Brad Michael. Hey, this will call it elimination. This calls an extermination match. <laughs> Spraying for bugs and pests will kill them, but others will... Two 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 twenty nine ninety. Operators are standing by for your call. Welcome to the Tulsa Convention Center, everybody. We're getting ready for a tremendous matchup here. Six-man tag team action, and you can see it surrounding the ring. That's barbed wire. That bizarre apparatus is a barbed wire cage. And as far as we know, this will be the first time ever that a barbed wire cage match has ever aired on television. You can bet it's going to be physical. The culmination of the feud between the Fantastics and the Sheep Herders Add Terry Taylor and his issue with Jack Victor, and you've got all the makings of a tremendous matchup here before this very enthusiastic crowd in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the beautiful convention center. There you see Tommy Rogers and Bobby Fulton, the Fantastics. A phenomenal team, and there's Lady Maxine along with referee Tommy Gilbert as they're trying to get this thing settled down and lock them in the cage, and let's go. Crazy Luke Williams of the Sheep Herders. 
He seems anxious to get this thing underway. And you better believe that the Fantastics are dead serious about this situation because the battle-scarred face of Butch Miller may look even worse. I know they're hoping the hair to come is breaking loose. The Sheep Herder's coming in the ring along with Jack Victory. So there you see them, all six men in the ring. And remember, it's a six-man tag team matchup. Watch the barbed wire. It can become a weapon. As it's going to be hard to keep up with the action in this one because all six men are in the ring at the same time. You've got Lady Maxine outside. It's going to be hard to keep up with the action. There's Terry Taylor and Jack Victory, and Victory's wrecking Taylor's face right across that barbed wire. Boy, I don't remember ever seeing Taylor now backing away from it, pushed himself back. This thing could get really, really get deadly before it's all over with. As Butch Miller is, look at his face right into the barbed wire. Victory come, comes from behind. Rogers just he reached out for the ropes and grabbed that barbed wire just instinctively reaching out. And look at Fulton. He was ran face first into the, into the lumber and into the wire. It's almost impossible to keep up with the action here on Power Pro Wrestling as the Sheep Herders and Jack Victory against Terry Taylor and the Fantastics inside barbed wire. The Sheep Herders have competed inside the wire before, but I think it's a first for Taylor, Victory, and the Fantastics. And look at this. He's wrecking that face. That's... I mean, I have never seen anything like what these men are going through in this situation. The hatred, the feud that has built between the Fantastics and the Sheep Herders coming to a tremendous climax here on Power Pro Wrestling. And this matchup, look at Fulton's face right across the wire. I'll tell you, this is getting to be a real bloodbath here on Power Pro Wrestling. Luke Williams bleeding as well, but Fulton's trying to come back. Taylor and Butch Miller have paired off, and you see Victory and Tommy Rogers. This matchup has really, it's like a mini battle royal because there's no tagging. There, Butch Miller on the second rope. Miller comes off across Terry Taylor's head. And Terry Taylor has been hammered with an offense. Miller over there for the cover of the referee is... The referee's virtually helpless in this situation. And we have got the clarent flowing here on Power Pro Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to take a commercial timeout and fulfill this commitment for the television station. Don't go away. We'll be right back with a battle in the barbed wire. Shaw Magazine or Ford saves you money. Now you can buy a brand new 1986 Ford Escort hatchback for $58.98, including freight and dealer prep. Weather, I'm meteorologist Steve Marville. Welcome back to Power Pro Wrestling, everyone. Jim Ross back with you from the Tulsa Convention Center. You can see it surrounding the ring, the barbed wire, that unorthodox cage, the barbed wire cage, six-man tag action, as you see. Butch Miller wrecking the face of Tommy Rogers across the barbed wire. And what's got to be the most physical and the most dangerous of all cage matches, the barbed wire cage. Barbed wire reminiscent of the early years out in the Southwest. And out here where we originate, we're in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The wrestling gets wild and crazy in the Southwest. As the Sheep Herders and Jack Victory now have all but stopped the momentum of the Fantastics and Terry Taylor. I think every man in this match has lost some blood in this one, but it's far from over. 
It's one fall, no disqualifications. Perry Taylor flying there from Luke Williams. Victory now hammering away at Tommy Rogers. And I tell you, I don't know. The referee's got to really, there's really not anything he can do, though, come to think of it. It's no disqualifications. They all signed for it. They knew what was on the line here on here in the Universal Wrestling Federation. When this match was proposed by the Sheep Herders to settle their situation once and for all, and Ter Terry Taylor and Bobby Fulton both are bleeding profusely here on Power Pro Wrestling. We asked why would someone want to sign a match and it's just get it settled. These are not cartoon characters, they're athletes, and they sell it the man's way. And you're seeing a man's battle here on Power Pro Wrestling as Victory's head right into the that wooden support. And Butch Miller going back first right into the barbed wire. I've never seen a match this physical in my life right here on the Universal Wrestling Federation. And I just personally don't know how much longer it can last inside the barbed wire. There's Bobby Fulton. This tremendous crowd at the Tulsa Convention Center is roaring its approval. And look at Luke Williams who just went face first into the barbed wire. There's Jack Victory, and it's almost, you almost just got to turn your head as Terry Taylor hammers Luke Williams. And these guys are hammering each other. Rogers came all the way off the top of the cage on that one. And I feel for the referee, Tommy Gilbert's working as hard as he can. Victory's going to try to get out of there, but he's not alone up there. There's Bobby Fulton with him. And Victor's head just ricochets off that wooden railing. What a matchup on Power Pro Wrestling. And you can see why the UWF, the fastest growing wrestling organization in the world, is just that. This is where you see the action as Fulton comes off the top rope. And this barbed wire cage match, Victor kicks out. It's one fall to a finish, no disqualifications in the Tulsa Convention Center. Victory now, pile driving Bob, uh, Tommy Rogers, or excuse me, Bobby Fulton. As I said earlier in this matchup, it's going to be hard to keep up with the action. I apologize for that inverting description of who, who it was. This crowd is into this thing, so are we. It's six-man tag action in the barbed wire. And it's become much more of a brawl or just a street fight than a wrestling match. The Fantastics and Terry Taylor against the brutal combination of the Sheep Herders and Jack Victory. Victory trying to go for the suplex. Terry Taylor over the top. Taylor's got Victory wrapped up in a cradle and the referee's caught the fall. Terry Taylor pinning Jack Victory. The victory for the Fantastics and Terry Taylor in this physical, this brutal, Six-man match inside that dangerous barbed wire. What a crowd in Tulsa at the convention center for this phenomenal showdown between the Sheep Herders and Jack Victory and the Fantastics and Terry Taylor. This tremendous crowd roaring, standing. Maxine there doesn't like it one bit, but the winners, Terry Ladies Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen, this tag team match has one fall. Introducing first, from parts unknown, 